So what um, impelled you to go back to documentary and make this, you know, wonderful film? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a good question. I get that question a lot. It's funny though, I didn't, I didn't necessarily stop documentary. I actually tried to pursue, I remember pursuing one and it kind of fell through. Um, and the grab took, took me six years. So um, I was sort of, I, I was working on it the whole time. I will say that um, a lot of documentary ideas were kind of thrown my way after Blackfish. And uh, I did realize that, you know, you really have to be so judicious and, and thoughtful about, you know, your documentary choices because they, um, they own you. You know, I mean, just you're, you're so tethered to this real world. And I, in particular, I don't, I don't cut off from the world very easily and, and sort of, oh, that's work. And, you know, here's my personal life. Um, for me, it's just one and the same. And so um, for years, I was, I was kind of embroiled in this, in this world and realized, okay, the next thing that I choose, um, it's got to be, you know, whatever, feel transformative enough to me um, to be able to be sort of tethered like that um, in, in a way. So that was, and for me, that was the grab. So how did you connect with Nathan and the Center for Investigative Reporting? Can you tell us a little bit more about the Center too? Yeah, um, Center for Investigative Reporting, it's a nonprofit, uh, a group, a team of uh, reporters there. Um, geez, I mean, they, they could they could give a better spiel, but Lowell Bergman, the insider, you remember the, the sort of big tobacco case back then, he, I believe, was one of the founders, if not the founder. Um, and they're just uh, a group of just dedicated uh, investigative journalists, which is now an embattled field. If you can imagine, it takes so incredibly long to to do a project like this, right? To to sort of um, I figure figure out what the story is, find the resources, make every single fact so ridiculously airtight that it um, that it you know exists in the world as this kind of factual document in a way, um, and it takes time and it takes a lot of risk for the investigative reporters, for anybody involved in these projects. And uh, and that's hard to get funding for things like that. You know, when you're telling funders that the future of this story is a question mark, we don't know, you know, we're gonna go search for it. That's that's a hard sell, it's becoming a harder sell. So um, support investigative journalists. Uh, but anyway, they sort of, um, they uh, came to me with the idea that there were, um, that there was, this sort of lack of resources in the world or, you know, like dwindling resources in the world. And what is this doing to the land? And what is this doing um, via climate change and, and so forth to um, issues of starvation across the world? And so it was just a lot thrown at me. And I was, and they were sort of like, what do you think this is? And um, I felt after kind of sitting with, sitting with Nate for a while and kind of really understanding and unpacking some of the stuff, and we, I, I was like, is this not, this is human agency doing this. This isn't some foretold environmental disaster, right? The, the sort of, you know, existential climate change thing. This is for sure caused by climate change and dwindling resources are. Um, but now look at what, pe how people are capitalizing on that. Um, so I said, this, this is like the grab, this is a grab for resources. And, um, and so we went about it with that sort of thesis um, in mind because, um, we wanted not only to say that this is something that human beings are doing, um, but it's also something that we can stop human beings from doing. Um, and uh, and that, to me, I know it doesn't seem very hopeful in that way, but to me, it also is just sort of like there is there are a series of answers to this. So in um, Blackfish, you dealt with SeaWorld. Now you're dealing with the entire world. How do you begin to think about and structure this documentary? When did it come to you? Or were you working with Nate and then suddenly you knew what the themes and how you were gonna tell the story? Yeah, I think it was, um, I think really understanding and unpacking the Africa part of it, which if you kind of imagine that this continent, you know, is, um, is a breadbasket to feed the rest of the world, just as Ukraine is a breadbasket, you know, there are these places that are particularly under siege. Um, it it seemed very clear to me that some of the like the ways to go about extracting resources from these places are in the shadows. You know, this is something that people know are are not a, is not a good thing. Um, and so 
that to me kind of compelled me to think of it as a grab. Um, and, and I think that that was the thesis that we stayed with. So there were plenty of climate change stories and environmental disaster stories that did not fit in to that. Um, and so we, we stayed with this idea of, of powerful people doing whatever they can to extract resources, you know, from behind our backs, from underneath us. Um, and that became the story. I do, um, I do think that it, you know, there was plenty of stories that sort of could have fit in, but didn't, didn't exactly fit in. Um, and at one point we knew this was a series, like we just knew that we had enough content to make this, you know, a nine parter. Um, but I personally was worried that, um, the people who need to be watching this, we may not have the attention span or the, you know, the people that, I don't know, it's just, it's just what all of us are fighting right now is just, I want this to feel like a bouillon cube, you know, of information. Don't get up from your seat. Don't look at your phone. Just, I want to just, you know, have a fire hose of stuff coming at you in order for, you to feel the thriller and you to know the, the thriller aspect of it because that's going to keep you in your seat and then um for you to be able to have this information you know and um and go out and do good things with it rather than like losing your interest during ap episode three um and uh and then and then losing an audience um so yeah it was a it was a, a painful choice because it makes um, it much shorter but Sometimes 90 minutes is all you have. Now, do you have a strategy for getting out the word? For Blackfish, you had CNN and 20 million people saw the film and it made a major, major impact. So what is your thinking about the grab and getting people, yeah. and everyone should see it, uh, right. getting them to see it? Definitely. Uh, well, we are doing the festival circuit now, um, which is very exciting. And again, thank you so much for, for having us here. Um, so excited and wish I was there in person. Um, but uh, it's a festival circuit for now, and we are um, where we've got distribution sort of in the works right now. Um, can't announce anything yet, but it looks like we will be able to, um, you know, reach a lot of corners of the world with this. And this in is an ongoing story, obviously. Uh, is Nate and the team still working on it? Are they getting troves that we don't know about that will be another film in a five years? <laughs> Um, there is a podcast right. that is coming out with Center for Investigative Reporting, where we're hoping to put all of the stories we were hoping to get in here in the podcast. So there will be that, and that's uh, Reveal, which is on you know KCRW out here, NPR, stuff like that. So it's like, this will be accessible in that way. Um, and then there's Tendrils, right? Mm -hmm. There's an, an entire Egypt, Ethiopia story we couldn't put in here that is just, we've got the scene cut, we've got it all ready to go. You know, is that another documentary down the few, down the road? Um, uh, yeah, so there is content for, hopefully for things in the future, um, but there is for sure um, a podcast that's being worked right. on. And you became a journalist too in this film. Uh, you're very active, uh, we see you quite a bit. So could you just talk about how you became both the documentary filmmaker and a journalist? Yeah, um, I mean, I don't um, really would never give myself that title right. because yeah. um, I'm not that great of a writer. <laughs> because, um, I'm just sort of this is my medium. Um, but yeah, there were just sort of questions for the film that I had to ask in a specific way. I think all filmmakers sort of feel that, you know, documentarians feel that way. It's, it's not just what you're asking, it's how you're asking it. And so, um, but it, but Nate is this trove of information in his brain. I mean, he just knows facts and figures. And so um, I would go in, you know, and interview everybody and was there on all the shoots and all that stuff. Um, and I would also ask Nate and the team of reporters, could we find out if X, Y, and Z is happening? Um, I need someone, you know, on the ground to be able to give us, give this, you know, we we need someone in Arizona to be, to be able to give this story credibility. I wanna know what it feels like to walk out and see your, your well dry. You know, so that we're, we've got a human kind of, you know, whatever portal of entry into all these stories. Um, and so they would search for people and then I would speak to them. It was kind of a double team thing um, to, to be able to come at our stories from sort of all, all the different ways. Um, but, you know, really the, the, the journalists is, are, are, are Nate 
and the and the team there um, who sit in front of a computer, make a b- bunch of calls from Center for Investigative Reporting, um, get hung up on, uh, you know, I just get the fruits, the fruits, but right. when they, when they do strike gold, um, and then I go in there with the cameras. Right. And Nate has a really good presence. It seems like he developed a presence over time and just talking to media because he had been on, you know, PBS and NewsHour things. But this is a, you know, he's the full-fledged uh, protagonist here. He is, exactly. That was a tough one, too. He did not want to be necessarily <laughs> the speaker in this, you know. Uh, and he also, you know, he comes from a whole different style of journalism. You know, just like it's much, much more buttoned up. You see him in NewsHour, like just, you know, and um, I was just always trying to break that down, break down and try to get to Nate because he's just hilarious and he's he's not all that, you know, he is put together in his brain, but he's also just sort of, you know, I don't know, just plays with his dog and he's just sort of like very human accessible um, sides to him. And that's what I kept trying to push through the other stuff and like, okay, no, no more narrating, you're narrating, you know, <laughs> like I want to, let's, let's start over. Um, and so that was a fun, a fun thing. And he was, um, he was up for it in the end, but he, he never put himself up to be, I, to be the full voice here. And did it change your filmmaking when he added other journalists to this project? Um, oh my gosh, it became so cool. Um, it just became cooler. I, I don't know, like, it was just like, uh, we knew we needed help. Like we were just, we were drowning in, in information. Um, and bringing these people on, Mallory is just the brain, you know, the, former Marine, but she just sort of sits there. She does not stop. She didn't stop. She went through 20,000 emails and just like tirelessly. Um, and Emma kind of pursued the Wall Street angle and found the, those folks and found that thing. Cause I was like, we gotta, gotta figure out what this country is doing. Cause we, you know, we know we're the, you know, uh, catalyst for a lot of crazy things happening. Um, if not the main catalyst. Um, and then we had another one, Joe Bill actually, who was not on camera. He, did, he, he didn't want to be on camera. Um, so he ran the cameras a lot, but he did a lot of research. Um, and they just, they, it just cut, it just filled it out, you know, with these different voices. And um, I don't know, I just, there was something that felt cool about this investigative team right. uh, pursuing the different tendrils, you know. And that mapping of Eric Prince's connections was so brilliant. When did that come in the process? Because that tells you so much just, you know, graphically. No, that's right. No, it was just, uh, that was David. He, we, um, it was, one of the cooler visual things that was that that helped us um, with all the connections that Eric Prince had um, and has. Uh, it was so difficult to um, understand really his inner workings by design, right? Like he like he wants it that way, um, we presume. And so, all just watching who someone talks to and how many times they talk to that person, you know. And if like, and then you know, what I mean, you start finding nodes of important people to be able to follow um and it distilled it down and made it so much so much cooler um to to look through this story through the galaxy it just just i mean it just saved you know hundreds of hours um to be able to pinpoint that traffic so yeah there's you know like a genius behind the curtain you know um that's what we call that process well we only have time for a f- uh, just a few minutes does anyone in the audience have a question <laughs> Yeah, are you making sure that people see it and the government see it and yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, we um, thank you so much for that. I'm so, I know it's terrifying. And uh, um, I do feel like, yes, like what you're saying, it's got to land in the right hands. Um, we do want to go very broad with everything. Um, we also have been asked, believe it or not, to screen it at the Pentagon. We've been asked, there's intelligence folks who were like, yes, this is what we've been saying the whole time, please, you know? get it out there. A lot of folks in DC, we are, yes, trying to get, trying to get at those angles. Um, Also want, you know, like, I don't know if you see that, whatever, like, like I tried very hard to not use the words climate change. Um, Not because it's not the most important thing facing us right now, but it's because those words carry so much baggage for 50% of our population right now. And they, they um, automatically turn off. Um, when they think that there is a thing that blue states care about and they possibly don't. And so there was just all these things sort of by design that I was just like, we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna make sure that they know that um, this is about a grab. This is about human beings and powerful human beings doing things and taking water out from underneath, you know, 
people who voted for, you know, the other candidate and not, not just this candidate. Like, it's just sort of like trying to shake, shake it open, right? And shake it open as being like, now this is absolutely 100% your issue. If you think you don't care about anybody in Serenje, Zambia, like fine, you know, if you don't think that, but what happens when that place starves, there's going to be conflict. It's gonna be low level conflict and then it'll get bigger. And that breeds disease. We see that disease doesn't respect borders, uh, inter international, national borders. Um, there's uh, refugees and there's conflict in places that we will deem geopolitically important, geopolitically dangerous, that we will get involved in. Uh, look at your store, the shelves on the stores with just Ukraine happening, you know, look at what's happened. It'd be just sort of like, we, we are so com interconnected, you know, their pain has got to resonate with us. Um, if, if for no other reason than like all these other reasons, you know, a million other reasons. So, um, yes. So going broad with it, trying to get it to as many people as possible is absolutely the plan. Um, whatever, shouting it from the rooftops in these film festivals from up until distribution, we get a distribution deal is also, is also helpful. Um, so yeah. So thank you for, for thinking that way. Gabriella, we've run out of time, unfortunately. So we're going to have to spread the word. You've made a film that we're going to be thinking about for months and months. Thank you so much for participating. Thank we you all so applause. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to meet you via Zoom.